Okay, in this first of two videos on multinational corporations, we're going to discuss why multinational corporations like to shift their operations overseas and then discuss some of the economic costs and benefits of multinational corporations. So firstly, any, when you're looking at the word multinational corporation, basically it's any corporation that is based in one country but operates across a number of different countries around the world. It's also known as a transnational corporation, and basically most of your major brands that you can think of, your Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, um, even your banks like Australian big banks like Commonwealth Bank, are all multinational companies because they're based in one country, but they operate across a number of countries around the world. In terms of why companies choose to become multinational, there's a whole range of reasons. Um, often they do it to take advantage of lower company tax rates in certain countries. So what they want to do is they shift their profits to countries that have lower company tax rates, um, and that allows them to retain a higher post of their sh uh, share, sorry, of their post tax profits. So one reason why companies decide to become multinational is because that allows them to pay less tax. Um, by shifting their taxes to other countries, or their profits to other countries, sorry. It gives them access to expanding global markets so they can increase the size of their market share. So basically, that's a fancy way of saying that, you know, they can have a bigger share of the global um, stake in that industry. So, for example, if it's the, tele if it's the um, mobile phone industry, then Apple moving overseas gives them a greater global market share and therefore increases their overall profits. Basically, it's a fancy way of saying they want to sell to Australians as well because then they can make money out of selling to the Australian market as well. Um, it gives them the opportunity to take advantage of economies of scale and advances in technology. So again, when companies become multinational, they then become they then sell to a larger pool of um, a pool of people or pool of consumers, and that allows them to spread their fixed costs over a greater volume of output, allows for lower production costs per unit of output and therefore essentially helps them to make more profits. They can also take advantage of a technology in other countries as well. Another key reason is because of the differences in wage rates. So some countries have much cheaper wages than other countries. They may, have, may not have a minimum wage or very low minimum wage. Um, they also have quite lax environmental laws, which basically means that they may be able to get away with more in that country than they could in other countries as well. Often countries will move over, become multinational so they can tap into the natural resources of other countries, so that allows them to take advantage of the resources at their disposal, which may not be possible. So, for example, if you're selling chocolate, Cadbury might want to have operations in some African nations that take advantage of more cocoa and things like that. And the last one is transfer pricing. As we've talked about in class, when we looked at the example of Glencore and Zambia, um, it allows them to manipulate their profits so they can set the price of goods and services between different entities or setting up subsidiaries in one company with a parent company and that basically allows them to manipulate their profits so they're paying more profits in an area that's got a lower tax rate um, to reduce the amount of company tax the firm has to pay. And lastly, they can take advantage of special economic zones. So a lot of countries, particularly China and India, have been in the news recently for having special economic zones where they have different laws to the rest of the country. So often these laws allow them for increased trade, they help lower company tax rates, make laxer environmental laws, um, might have lower wages or lower minimum wages, and they're all designed to increase foreign investment and encourage multinational companies to come to that country. They, as I said, they often have lower tax rates, lower environmental laws, and often have an absence of a minimum wage. In terms of the economic costs and benefits of multinational corporations, um, one of the benefits of multinational corporations is that it provides increased employment for that country. So the investment into that country, and then basically that business establishing itself in that country, will often lead to a lot of jobs, and they'll also provide training and support and mentorship which can help to improve skills and reduce unemployment within that country. So multinational companies, when they go to that country, they then provide um, the employment, investment, training, and that can have benefits for the whole economy. It also has multi um, multiplier effects for other industries. So what that means is that all those people getting a job for, say, Apple when they move to Ireland, then have more money to spend, and that creates more jobs for other industries as well because of the increase in consumption spending. Multinational companies often provide better paid conditions um, in developing countries. So even though they get a bad rap for often um, looking for the cheapest way to produce, they still often pay more than local firms in those areas, um, which is important to recognise. Because of the lower production costs, they can often take advantage of economies of scale because of their larger um, volume of trade, um, and therefore they can often sell things cheaper than locally produced products. So they create jobs, they often pay better wages, they often can lead to cheaper priced products which also helps to reduce inflation and increase consumers' purchasing power. 
by increasing investment into many countries, they get people out of poverty and therefore can reduce the poverty trap in those countries. Often these countries don't have enough money to invest themselves. Um, so multinational companies can come to those countries and then create the um, investment and essentially allow a lot of people to get a job and get out of poverty. Multinational companies introduce new technology and bring with them new knowledge, so that improves the skill base within that country. Um, that can lead to increased productivity um, in developing countries. Investment in capital equipment can, as I said, boost the productivity of other resources. So what it's basically saying is access to better technology, better equipment, can then make our labour more productive. So, for example, from a simple point of view, if you're making... I don't know, textures and you don't have many capital resources, if you invest in new machinery and new capital, then each worker can then make more textures per hour because they've got access to better technology. So it allows them to get access to new technology and they also, the main thing is that they pay tax on their profits. Even though they try and pay as little as possible, it does provide more revenue for the government because um, if they come to that country, then they will help the government to collect more revenue, create budget surpluses, and then that money can be invested into training and education and healthcare and infrastructure, which can boost the living standards of that country. So, you know, summarising the main benefits before we get onto the costs, they collect revenue for the budget, which reduces the surplus, uh, sorry, increases the surplus, which gives them more money for other products. They give them access to new technology, they create jobs because they come to the country to help to develop the skill base. They can lead to lower price products because of economies of scale and they can get a lot of people out of poverty. In terms of the costs of multinational corporations, um, often the profits are repatriated or returned back to the country where the base is um, and that can lead to the country going into a lot of debt. We haven't talked in class really about current account deficits, which we'll talk about more next year, but essentially a lot of the profits flow back overseas, which leads to bigger debts for that country. Um, the high level of power of multinational corporations means that they can hold countries to ransom. So what that often means is that they can negotiate to pay less tax in that country. So that may lead to them, you know, for example, Apple taking advantage of Ireland and paying them less tax than they should. So the government doesn't get nearly as much as they should from these multinational corporations. Um, many of the top end managerial positions are often still um, owned by the people in the country of origin. So what I mean by that is that Often, you know, the main positions in those companies won't go to local people. They'll go to people that come from, for example, America if they're operating in a um, developing country. So it doesn't really help to develop the skills and managerial experience of people within that country. And they still st get stuck with having low skill bases and a, um, a widen, widening the distribution of income within those countries as well. If labour costs increase in developing countries, many multinational companies will then move it, um, to another country where it's cheaper, and that can then increase unemployment. So they can be a short-term solution, then they might leave once that country becomes more um, prosperous, and that's happening in Vietnam with their growth, um, and then they'll leave again, and that will create the same problems once again. So summarizing, summarizing it can lead to more debt, it can lead to um, them not paying the right amount of tax, it can lead to a lack of skill development because most of the managerial positions are still taken up by people from the country of origin and they often leave after a certain amount of time and that can lead to problems for unemployment again. Some of the other costs of multinational corporations, often they leave local businesses less competitive. So Amazon, for example, is causing a lot of domestic businesses to go out of business. Aldi had difficulties for Dick Smith. Um, is another example in that industry. So they can take advantage of economies of scale and produce cheaper, so local companies often go out of business. They're often capital intensive because it's cheaper, um, and that can therefore lead to a lack of skill development because they're not interested in hiring as many people, they just want more capital. Um, while pay is higher, working conditions are often still poor in these multinational corporations. They often make people work extremely long hours, which hurts their non-material living standards. There's also been incidents of unsafe work sites and deaths. So there was a lot of deaths in Bangladesh, for example, in the past um, as a result of unsafe workplaces by these multinational corporations. And as we've talked about in class, companies can be involved in transfer pricing. So a lot of the taxation revenue doesn't stick with these developing countries. Thank you.